Well, hello everyone. Um, <laughs> this is actually that yellow gold piece that I started. I did the mixing video. I did the intro as to why I was going to cover it up, what part I didn't like, and what had actually happened. And in the camera, you're only going to see a little bit of the gold coming through. Um, actually, there was more than you realize. And had I known how pretty, I'm loving this experimentation. How pretty. There's, there's this one little section here where there's red and orange and gold coming through that purple sapphire. And it's making it like glow. That's an effect I'm definitely going to do again. But what happened was, somehow the video file got corrupted, and you didn't get to see me paint this. <laughs> I used the, uh, this just got dry enough for me to pick up and show. I used Illuminite, Illuma, Illuma Light. They're black. Uh, because I, I wanted black, but I didn't necessarily want too much selling. The stone coat creates beautiful selling, but I use it sparingly so I can control the selling. Um, I also used aquamarine, resin art, purple sapphire, resin art. Oops, I think I've got this upside down. The Belize blue. Um and the black. Now what I did was, what looks like all that pink and light color, I took the purple sapphire, and one thing I did get filmed was the little mix it part, and the little color patch I did. <laughs> I did want to, I promised you guys in the video that got corrupted, or the intro before it, that I'm gonna do a little patch when I get colors mixed up. I'll do a little tile patch just because you can see before and after and maybe go back as a reference if you want to watch the video, okay? So this was the Belize Blue Aquamarine Purple Sapphire, but I mixed the Purple Sapphire with two parts interference violet, mica, which I still only have my little lab sample. Our next batch drops on Thursday. Uh, to get this lighter shade, and then I did the same thing and put a few drops of the Stone Coat White, which was fantastic to give me some cells. And that's what kind of is turning out in this pink. And now the Interference Violet that's mixed in that purple sapphire is going to give you a lot of iridescent violet transparencies, which we have all over the place. The Interference Violet can come in here where you see it's coming in darker. Okay, that's still just the interference violet, but also here where uh, either the stone coat or more of the violet concentrated, because this is actually glowing in here. This came out really beautiful. I'm loving how that aquamarine floated over the aluminite. What you missed in the video is I was trying to get you guys to see how pretty the lacing came up on this side and I picked it up with the camera on so I could show you how sparkly everything was and the paint pulled up and I almost lost this up here. There is quite a bit of sparkle in here. I'm not sure how much is going to translate in the camera. What I did do is I added, we're getting a new material. It's a larger particle size mica. It's still mica in the mica family. Um, it's real glittery. It added some extra blingy to, and I did it, I added it to the Belize Blue and the Aquamarine. But I am just, I, I and so we'll be having this, we'll be packaging this We'll also be offering the straight interference violet. Use this to lighten colors. Use this to add some sparkle without actually adding glitter. You don't have to add glitter to it to get some extra bling. 
Um, I am going to do a smaller piece in the same color combination for you. I don't know how much you can see how changeable that is there. This almost looks 3D where that violet and that purple sapphire is running together. My only regret is I didn't have a little more warmth left in here from that first layer of the orange. I love what happened underneath there, even though it's a lot of work to lay that orange down. Um, I don't think I need to do the individual swipe sections. I was trying to control it a lot. I think I could get away with just an undercolor, let it dry, and then a pattern over the top like this. This is really beautiful. I can't even tell. I, I think it's over here where that first layer with a flower was. And that's just kind of how forgiving the resin is. The resin will self-fill, fill, where it thinks it needs to. So without further ado, I'm going to come back with, uh, I'm trying to get my camera to pan out here. Come back with the uh, same colors mixed. I just, I am just in love. Let's see, where is it? Over here. I'm looking at it on the camera. I'm loving what happened here. Now, and I'll do it on, on in the piece again. Of course, no two ever turned out the same way. But what I did is I'm learning. Okay, I'm not an expert. If you warm just slightly, then you can swipe. And you don't have like this big flood of resin you're trying to move around. What I was doing in a couple of my pieces, I was getting them just too hot before I tried to swipe. So in this one, I warmed it, swiped, warmed it, blew it, you know, warmed it, swiped, warmed it and blew it, you know, where I felt I had to. I've got some, I, I just wish there was some way I could show you guys all the changeable shifting in this thing it is i gotta say this piece turned out absolutely magnificent um i'm not sure which way i'd hang it i don't know if i'd hang it this way or if hey if i'd hang it lengthwise to be honest some of the areas here kind of look like the a beta fish wing you know, I don't even think I can get it lengthwise in the camera, but I'm thinking of maybe hanging it this way because I love how the top looks and how the bottom looks. It's pretty stunning. So I'm going to put this back in the chamber, even though it's dry enough to pick up and show you guys, it still could, it's definitely not cured. And I will be right back. I have a 16 by 20 prepped. It's a lot smaller than this one, but I'm going to use the same color combination so you can kind of get an idea of what I did when I did this piece. See you guys in a bit. Okay, so I'm back. And I've got my same colors mixed up other than I mixed up some dragon gold and added some of this new shimmery gold to it. It lightened it up for me slightly and makes it really a little even extra blingy than it already is if it really needed it. So, and I've got my two purple sapphires mixed with the interference violet. Like a powder, we're doing this on Thursday. Um, it's landing Thursday. You guys won't see it probably on the website for at least about a week. And then the regular, and uh-oh, I should be able to tell. Oh, I haven't added the stone coat yet. That's why I can't tell. I'm going to do this on camera. Okay, so I have purple sapphire mixed with uh, two parts of interference violet, both the same in each cup, but I'm going to add a little bit of the stone coat. I've got about this little tiny taster spoon here, and if you can see on the right part of the side of the camera here, and I'm just dropping 
not that much came off the spoon. About three drops in there. Cover this up. One thing you want to do is make sure you cover up your stone coat. It's, uh... <laughs> That's going to be my cell color. I'm going to leave that over here so I can tell the difference between the two. Okay, so I want to, I gotta get my sticks out of here. I have a tendency to knock stuff over if I leave the big sticks in these cups. Well, this is the Illuminite, Illuminite, and I only put a few drops in all this resin. I even added more resin to it. Pretty rich color. Make sure all four corners are covered. And... I have a little trick. I put paper towel down on my brand new clean plastic if I happen to dribble something and the next day when it dries the paper towel will pick up all the resin and my clean plastic underneath will go clean again. So I kind of dribbled that black there. I'm trying, I'm going to end up having to use my fingers, I know, but I'm trying to keep from getting my hands black right off the bat before I pick up all the rest of these cups. I am using art resin, one part, one part. Okay. So I'm intentionally kind of bringing it up on one side and bringing it down on the other side. Okay. So I put down the aquamarine first and I did the same thing on the bottom. The only thing missing is the warmth in the middle. Call me crazy, but I'm going to mix up a tiny bit. Blushing Lily because I can. I think ginger peach is too orange. The blushing Lily has just enough interference violet in it to where it's not going to fight with that purple sapphire very much. So I just, I don't need much, just a little bit for the center. Me a little pop of some kind of warmth. I have extra resin mixed. I think total I've mixed well, maybe 10 ounces. There's that blushing lily.
Okay, then the purple sapphire with the interference. I want some of it wispy here on the outside. And the one with the stone coat, you know, it has to, stone coat needs. Now you can see the different colors on camera, how much lighter the stone coat made that other color. Almost pinky in that big piece. Sapphire. Some gold. The least blue. purple sapphire in the center here. I'm going to put this pop of color right here. Just a pop. I have the gold up there, so I'm going to some of the gold down here with this. Now I have a lot of clear, but I also have a lot of paint on this. So when I've stayed so much over the edges, let's see if I can get my hands clean. fingers are here transferring color to sets of gloves. I think I need some of that stone coat color here too. crazy pouring everything off the sides, didn't I? I don't think I can tilt it yet. Not really. <laughs> well, I have some black left. Didn't really want to do it at this point yet. But I thought I might draw some in. I have some more gold, and I definitely have clear if I have to make up more color. I don't want to get desperate and in a rush. I'm happy to use the clear as part of this, just to get the color more fluid so it moves around.
So I just broke that little popsicle stick. transferring that black around. I'm trying to keep the black in one spot. So it's the only thing with uh, putting that black in the center. This violet up here. There is some clear right here. Okay, it looks like we're we have color everywhere. I know there's that little bitty clear in the middle. So one thing I've learned was the last few times, if I warm it just enough to pop the bubbles, I can swipe it. If I heat it up enough that I want it to blow, it's too much like it floods when you're trying to swipe it. See if I can give you guys a whoo look at what happened to that gold. Ha! That's the uh, dragon gold with a tiny bit of that new sparkly stuff put in. Wow, that's like on steroids, the rest of it's pretty sparkly too. You can see all the blue.
I'm liking what's happening right there. That one little blushing lily spot. Come on, camera. Where we're getting some really pretty cells in, in the center. Gosh, I don't even want to touch this thing. But it is a canvas, not a cradle board. So I've got to be really, really careful and watch this thing and make sure it's not pooling up too much in one area. All right, now I'm loving this little wisp of gold just whipping into that black. I wish there was some way to encourage that without ruining it. And these cells are really, really cool. I'm loving what's happening here. Well, this is a little bit of redemption, and that's what I did with the big piece. I did, I blocked out the top left, the bottom right, did the frame, did the aquamarine, the aquamarine, the two pastel lilacs, um, the Belize blue. The only thing that's different is because the other piece had a whole layer that was gold and orange, I put in some of the dragon gold mixed with that new shimmery gold uh, and just a drop of just a little bit of the uh, God I'm wondering if I should swipe it right there I'm getting some incredible lacing right here but I don't know about that one little patch it's like it got missed I don't know just a little heat gun is everything else around it's good. And that's kind of cool. I don't know what it's going to do, but it actually made it pop a little brighter and it's starting some cells there. So I'm going to leave this. I'm loving how that gold, oh my God, I wish I could get close-ups of this. Okay, I'm going to try to slide this thing back and forth. I'm not going to tilt it. All right, so the center, that's that dragon gold mix with that new sparkly gold. Let me get my cups off this table. I'm going to add to my little patch tile here what I showed you guys. Okay. Let me drop some of this new gold on here. It's still the dragon gold, but with the extra little... I only have a tiny bit. So you can see what kind of color gold that is by adding some of that uh, shimmer gold into the dragon gold. Okay, so let's get a close-up. And I'm going to start, depends on if this plastic lets me pull it back and forth. Okay. So you see the lacing up here? We're almost getting a little aurora borealis where the gold and the sapphire and the turquoise is missing. We've got some really beautiful lacing happening right in here. Um, see how much my phone picks up that sparkle? It's dazzling, actually. Uh, then there's this area here, and I'm going to try to push it forward for you. And then the lacing on the bottom here is extraordinary. I'm loving what happened with this swipe. This is where I just kept taking the leftover paint and dragging it on. Took a page out of Erica's book from Artist Till Death. That's what she does with the leftover, and I like that effect I got right there. Uh, yeah, I'm liking all of it. This has really beautiful patterns, but the center, 
that just one little tiny pop of blush a lily and it's it's pretty coral it is not that pink This is really gorgeous, absolutely stunning. Um, anyway, I'm quite pleased, even though you didn't get to see how I did the big one. Same technique, I warmed and swiped, and then I blew back and forth, and then I swiped, and then I blew back and forth, and I swiped, and I blew back and forth, and I swiped. And then the center, I just kind of let it do its thing and heat it a little bit. Thank you for joining me, guys. Hope you have a good day. Bye.